the thing broke is this person who does not understand the difference between the needs and the wants. And this is my lesson and my topic today. Most of us who are watching today, we are broke, not because we've got no source of income, but because we have not understood the difference between the needs and the wants. 99% of the people watching today, 99% of the people saying they are broke, they are just broke because they do not understand the difference between needs and wants. And I'll explain some of it using an example. Let me use example to explain this. A need, when we talk about, let's say, a basic thing like a phone. I want to use a mobile phone because this is where problem starts. You see, if you are earning a salary, just a minimum, like let's say the minimum wage in whatever place you are in your country or country of residence, you are getting the minimum wage. You need a phone. You need a basic phone for communication. At least it's a phone that you can, uh, you know, surf the internet, you can receive WhatsApp messages and, and also make calls on WhatsApp. You can get direct calls. The battery is okay. You charge it once or twice a day or maybe three times a day. That's fine. And that is what we call a need. But look, somebody earning a minimum wage, wherever they are, and they are upgrading their phones every season that an iPhone is upgraded. You know, when an iPhone is released, when Samsung is released uh, uh, a brand, when Huawei releases a brand, you also want to buy the upgraded one, the new version, the new brand, yet you are earning a minimum wage. The truth is, you are going to be in the bracket of the broke people, yet you are getting, you are earning I'm just using a phone as an example, but there are so many things that we're going to talk about here. Most of us are broke because we do not understand how to differentiate between the needs and the wants. We are living on, on wants instead of living on needs. There are so many people that are suffering to even relationships that we are in today. They break because people are so much into wants than needs. Somebody wants a designer. You want to buy original Nike that is costing, let's say for example, I'll use dollars. An original Nike that is costing perhaps uh, $200, the cheapest, let's agree. And your salary, is $1,000. Do you know you can afford that shoes? Yes. But if you look at your situation and the salary that you are earning, when you make, you calculate a percentage of what you are using from your salary to buy shoes, which is a want, you can go to a, you know, a, a copy Nike store and purchase one and use it Yet you want a designer because a friend of yours who's earning $5,000, $4,000 more than you is wearing a designer and you also want to be like them. This is the kind of life we are living. Most of the people are broke today not because they don't have a job. They are broke because they do not understand the difference between needs and wants. Let's talk about a house. You are having a minimum wage and you want to live in a luxurious apartment you also want to use a lift you are in the city and you're working and you have a minimum wage but because when you subtract a certain amount you know we are watching from very different places we are watching some of us are from kenya tanzania uganda france germany so i don't want to use a currency because i'll be confusing a lot of people but think about your pockets 
you are earning and you find a very luxurious house and you want to rent it and you see when you look at your salary if you subtract that amount of money from it for sure you'll still have some money left my question is have you ever sat down with yourself and calculated your money in terms of percentage the money you are paying for your rent the money you are paying for your food some of you like uh, you know me here who don't you know love cooking you want to eat in restaurant every single evening every single night every single lunch every single breakfast the question is have you ever tried to make a percentage calculation on what you earn even if you have the lowest uh, you know um, grade of studies even if you just dropped out of school even at grade three doing a percentage calculation of what you earn vis-a-vis -vis the, the spendings is so easy you don't need a degree or a, or, or, or a phd or even a college certificate to do that most of us are broke today not because we don't have money but it is because we are living on wants not needs when you're growing up when you're having a small business when you're having a small job you're getting the minimum wage you need to understand what i need and the things that i want stop buying iphone 15 when you cannot afford that phone three times i have thought about this before personally this is always my motto anything that is liability in my house here i can afford them more than three times the car that i drive if i wanted to buy it again today i'll buy three of them and i will not have any problem i will not break my bank the car that i drive today i will buy it three times three of them and i will not have to stress my bank account the phone that i use that is in front of me right now i can buy more than 10 of them and i won't have a problem the laptop that is in front of me those who are watching me on facebook i can buy tens of them and i won't have a problem with that the reason is i go for what i need i don't go for what i want oh you know my my my, my friend we used to be in the same class just bought a mercedes benz ce class so and you know i'm i'm earning even better than him how can this guy be driving a mercedes benz yet i'm just driving uh, you know a suzuki or i'm driving a corolla this is not possible you see you're going to be broke not because you don't have money but because you're living on wants you're not living on your needs you've got to understand what is what is that thing that i need in my life than the things that I want. I have clothes like these that I'm wearing here. I don't need to buy a designer. Let me tell you something. <laughs> There's a guy, a very good friend of mine, an old man. I used to coach uh, his son. Uh, the son now is in the United States and studying there. I used to coach his son. And there's a day that I asked this old man, he used to give me a lot of lessons. Whenever we spoke, he used to pour a lot of information on my mind or head. So one day I asked him that uh, you've got a lot of money, but I don't, I just see you driving normal cars and, and, and you just dress like, you know, a normal person, but you're so rich. What, why? Then he told me something that you see, John, the people who walk, with the designers the people who walk with it not who wear you know there's that person who walks with the designer they wear it and they walk with it they go shopping they go the clubbing with the designers he told me these are poor people walk with designers but rich people sell designers they make money by wearing designers like for example you will never see Cristiano Ronaldo walking on Adidas shoes unless he's having a signed contract with them. You will never see Econ dressing on a Nike cap or t-shirt 
or Louis Vuitton unless he has got a contract and he's dressing on it to market it or to create an influence for that brand. So we, those who are surviving with the minimal or in the middle class, we are the ones now because we saw Econ and Econ is one of those people that I really admire and Econ was wearing a Nike. So I have to go and purchase a Nike. You know, I have to go and either borrow money to go and purchase Nike, or I have to save my salary twice to be able to afford that t-shirt, just because Econ was dressing on it. That is why most of us, a big percentage of us are broke. We are broke not because we don't have jobs, we are broke not because our businesses are not performing well, but we are broke because we are competing with things that are beyond our reach. You buy um, an iPhone 15, and if it falls down and it breaks, you hang yourself. You're going and purchasing an iPhone 15. And if it falls in water, you won't eat for the next one month because you've lost everything. You are saving money for years to buy a used Mercedes-Benz perhaps and you cannot even afford to insure it. So you buy it and you don't insure it. If or when you get an accident, it is gone with all your money. The people who are driving Mercedes-Benz, my people, have insured even the tire. They have insured even the pen inside that Mercedes-Benz. You are buying it and you cannot even insure it. It doesn't mean it is wrong to buy Mercedes-Benz. My question is, is it worth? Is it a need in your life? Do you need it? Do you need it? Do you know, guys, most of these rich people that you see driving big cars, some of these people a big percentage of them, they don't buy. There are some people that just by driving that car, the companies that manufacture those cars, you know, will plead with them that just come and drive on our car. They will be pleading with them. And I'll tell you one person, two, two of them. There's two guys, athletes in Kenya. One called, uh, what is the name of this guy? Uh, the, the, the marathon, what is his name? I forgot, but Kenyans know him. Who's now, you know, has a, a, a limited brand of Toyota. What is his name, that guy? And there's another one also, uh, this printer, uh, the Luya guy, I don't know where the names went today, who is also now advertising, I don't know whether it is a Toyota or a Suzu as well. So these guys, they don't even buy that pickup. They are called, like, the, the, you know, the manufacturer wants them. Yes, the, 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 the sprinter guy is called Omanyala. Thank you, David Chwea. Omanyala now is driving a double cabin. I think it's Toyota or Isuzu. I'm not so, so uh, you know, so sure about it. He's not buying that. But just because Omanyala is driving that double cabin, Everybody wants to drive on it. And who's going to go for it? The middle class. Those who will save money until they go and buy it. It is not bad. It is not wrong. The question is, is it worth your pockets? Or are you trying to squeeze your pockets just to make people happy? You can be broke because you've got no income. That's fine. But when you're broke, no matter how little you're earning, you can never be broke. I'm 100% sure that whatever little you are earning, you can never be broke. I was so stupid before, some years back, and I was just like some of you, where you get salary and you want to buy everything that you've been wishing to have without questioning yourself that can, do I, do I need this? Or I just want to buy it so that I can have it. You know, I have a lot of things in my room that sometimes when I look at them, I'm like, 
why was I even buying this? And most of you too have them in your houses. You have things that, uh, thank you, Faiza. Faiza is just reminding me about this guy that I was trying to think about his name. He's called Elliot Kipchoge. Elliot Kipchoge is now, you know, it has a, a limited brand of Toyota uh, double cabin as well, or pickup as it is called in Kenya. And these guys don't buy those cars. And imagine he has got money that can buy those cars, those pickups or whatsoever, hundreds of it, but still they will not buy. They will be called and told, bro, just come and ride on our car. You know, stop using Toyota. We want to give you a Suzu and we will be giving you every year. We will be giving you one. We will be changing. And, you know, any time that uh, we upgrade or we, 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 we manufacture a new brand, we will be giving it to you. So they decide that, okay, I'll not be driving on Mercedes-Benz. I'll be driving on Toyota. Lamborghini calls somebody like Cristiano and tells Cristiano Ronaldo that, you know what, you need to stop driving Ferrari. We want to give you Lambo and every year we will be changing it. So you are thinking like, oh, did you see what Cristiano Ronaldo is, is riding? And you're thinking that he bought it. My dear sisters and brothers, this old man, who's a very good friend of mine, I've been coaching his son, told me that, John, never ever buy a designer or a branded cloth or a branded shoes. Be the brand that these people will be looking so that you can wear their brand to influence it or to market it. Push yourself to a point where you will not be going to their shops, they will be coming to you so that you can wear their brand because you are a brand yourself. I don't know if somebody is getting this. I want to repeat. The old man told me, don't squeeze yourself in buying branded clothes. Build your own brand. Be a John Gora as a brand. Where Nike would wish that you wear their clothes. Adidas would be wishing that you stop wearing Nike and you wear their clothes and they will increase the package that Nike is offering you. You know, I sat down and I said, wow, okay, I get your point, yeah. Because if I have to be buying those brands, I'll be broke. I won't go anywhere. I have first of all to be the brand. I have to create my own brand. So once you've created your brand, you are known as John Gora as a brand. You are the brand. Those brands will be looking for you. The perfumes companies will be looking for you. Just use it and make a video for us. You see, sweetheart, that one thing that you are working so hard and spending all your money on, you don't have to do that. You just need to know what you need, the basic needs. Traveling, for example, you want to travel on taxis, you want to travel on Uber, you want to travel on aeroplane just because you want to take a photo and surprise your friends that you traveled on an aeroplane. Can you afford it for a whole month traveling back and forth? Are you in a position to afford traveling on aeroplane from Kisumu to Nairobi every week? Or are you just doing it for the sake of trying to please people? There's a bus, there's a train, but you don't want to take a train because you're feeling that what will people think if I'm using a train? Let me just use a taxi. Are you living for people or you're living for yourself? Today I said, decisions that you're making, you know, people who become great make decisions that nobody can take. When the decisions that you're making, when the things that you do, are doable by everyone and nobody even bothers to ask nobody bothers to be surprised on why he's doing that it means you're not becoming great do you know that the rich people those who have made it so much are really coming down here to eat with us you find a president the whole president for him to feel like he's a great person he needs to come and sit down with the mama boga the kenyans know that right 
mama mboga <laughs> mlirambwa kweli kweli so a president wants to come and sit down with the mama mbogas just to appear like he's a great person yet the poor person is really working hard so hard to wear a suit to wear nicely to go and eat in a seven star restaurant to feel that they are great why don't people ask themselves that why the owner of seven star restaurant leave to eat there to come to eat in this small restaurant to feel that he's great sometimes i don't know how we think as human beings that we strive so much to build millions and millions and millions of you know wealth then now we feel that when we are in that wealth we are not great we need now to come back and sit at the marketplace and eat some banana drink tea or porridge now to feel that you are great my question is why should i not feel great when i'm drinking this same porridge when i'm still down here why should i not feel great when i sit down with those mamas and the mothers selling in the stalls why am i not feeling great at that time why must i wait until i push up then i come back the reason why we cannot do that it's because we are making decisions that anyone can make we are not thinking about becoming great we are only thinking about you know being somewhere i just want to be somewhere you don't just want to be somewhere you want to push you know for me i make decisions sometimes until even the person who is closer to me they can't ask like they are scared make decisions that are scary that when people think about asking they stammer sometimes i say be so honest with people that they become scared of you when you decide to date someone date them so honestly like when they think about doing something they become scared be so good be a good person to a point where when somebody thinks about doing something wrong with you they take a step back some of you you just open like people can just think of anything they tell you anything they want to steal they will come and tell you that you know what there's a chance to steal from here are you okay are you really okay are you really going somewhere do you look great be someone that people take some time before they come to ask you something sometimes i see people sending me messages on my whatsapp even today there's a lady who was sending me a message and telling me that i need you to advise me but i don't have money will you help me then i'm like maybe you don't know the person you are texting you know i have taught people several times that you've got to know your value when you know your value you don't have to compromise that value people stop reasoning with emotions we reason too much with emotions we think that we can help the whole world you cannot take the world's problem problems and put on your back there are some problems that you can solve you can solve all of them so that is what we call needs you've got to know your needs like for example if you're coming to me and you're telling me that i should spare my time to advise you and you think that i should do that for free then you don't value me and i don't think that you are going to value what i'm going to tell you that's what i believe and that's the decision decision that i made it is weird it is hard and some people will be like but why don't you just have it is my decision and that is it and that's how people move from being broke to being something have principles know the needs having wants is just like you have a shop you are selling some bananas and everyone is just coming oh i'm hungry you know i'm very hungry i have not i have not eaten anything everyone not one person everybody is coming because they know oh jen will give let me tell you something a lot of us have been told about kindness 
Imagine you left your home with bananas. You are going to the market to sell it because you have an issue and you need money. On the road or at the market, you decide to give it all for free. And you still believe that God is going to give you because you gave others. Who, who bewitched you? Who bewitched some of us? Religion bewitched you to, to think that you, you left. You see, when you are still at home and you have the banana and you don't want to go to sell them, give it to people. That's kindness. But when you have the banana, it is the banana that you have. You're taking them to the market to sell, to get money to buy something. And you're thinking that by giving all this banana for free in the market, God is going to open you the way somewhere. That is a foolish mind and you will remain broke. And you will be claiming that did God forget about me? That is why most of the people who serve God diligently are broke. It is not that God loves broke people. It is because we are stupid and foolish enough to understand that God has given us an opportunity to get money out of those bananas. But craziness, reasoning with emotions, is pushing you to give out those bananas for free. Do you know that Jesus Christ had the power to just pray and tell God, God, Father, bring wine. These people need wine to drink. And wine will just pour like rain because he had the powers. But Jesus still asked the people, but what do you people have? What do you have? Why didn't Jesus just tell them that, okay, go, I'll give you the wine. Jesus was teaching people and people were hungry. And the disciples say that, uh, Master, we have been teaching this 5,000 crowd and they are now hungry. They need food. People are listening to Jesus while he is teaching. And he is the son of God. Who can just tell God, God, these people are hungry. And manna will pour down. But Jesus still asked them, but what do you have as food? And the disciples had to say, we have got bread and fish, but it's just for one person. That is what Jesus multiplied. Wisdom is needed, guys, to stop being broke. We need to be more wise than acting with emotions. Emotions have taken so many people broke. And if we don't stop it, we'll continue being broke to the letter. I don't know whether there are some questions here. People say sometimes too much kindness will pull some of us down. I still wonder, sometimes I wonder why you could be someone who was, you stayed for the last six months with no job. After six months, you get a job and you're still broke and you're serving God and you're going to church every single Monday, every single Sunday every single Tuesday, every single Wednesday, you are going to church and serving God and worshiping him so much, but you're still broke. What is the problem? Learn to separate the needs from the wants. The things that you want are not very important in your life. The things that you need are very important in your life. When you need a house, you need a house that you where you can live, a house that is good, that is equipped. You don't need an expensive apartment that is going to cost you so much. When you need to travel, you can travel on a bus, you can travel on a personal car if you have one. Stop traveling on Uber, taxi, flight if you can't afford them. Just because you want to take pictures and post them on social media to show people that you also travel on flights. Stop wearing designer clothes. Build your brand so that designer clothes can look for you. Use basic clothing. You will look neat, well, great, without spending a lot of your money on things that you do not need. Stop upgrading your phone. iPhone 15 came out. Now you want to buy it. iPhone 16 is coming. You want to buy it. Yet you are doing the same things 
with the same phone. If you're buying it because you're upgrading, because you need the camera, you are a content creator, that's fine. But you're buying this thing and upgrading every time and yet it is not giving any income to you. <sighs> may God bless us and may God bless you. And I hope that one day God will open our eyes so that we can understand how the world has corrupted our minds. My dear um, brothers and sisters, it is time to open your minds and start looking beyond the things that you've known since you were born. It is time for you to study hard beyond books. Don't just study using the books. Go beyond books and look at the way things are happening. The world is changing, yes. The people that you think are coming for you, they're not coming for you. The leaders that we chose that we thought are going to make our life better do not care anymore. Be it in church, be it in politics, be it in schools, people don't care anymore. And you don't want to blame them because even you who I'm speaking to today, if you are in position where those people are today, you will do the same. But the only secret that we have for now that is going to make us great is when you start to question everything and you start making those decisions that scare people. Make decisions that make people run away from you. Because when people start running away from you, that's the time you start to open your doors to the right people. When you see a lot of people, a lot of crowd within your space, there's a problem. There is something that a lot of crowd is gaining from you and you're not gaining anything from them. When you see yourself trying to explain too much to people, the reason why you are the person you are, the reason why you are taking decisions and making steps that you're making, there's a problem. You need to take a break and start fixing your circle. The smaller your circle is, the better. If you want to be great at something, you must give it time. If you want to be financially free, young men who are watching today, I want to tell you something. Leave those gambling. It's not going to make you financially free. Gambling is not going to make you financially free. Those bets that you're making, you're putting your money on bets, it's not going to give you those freedom that you're looking for. Let me tell you, there's a video I did yesterday and I said this. Go lost. Just get lost for six months or 12 months of your time. My brother, this is a message for you. Sister, stay aside. Let me speak to this brother. I know your girlfriend needs some good things. I know you need to surprise her. Valentine is coming. But I'll tell you something. If she's a woman who understands the person you are, even if you won't give her a gift on this Valentine, and you get lost financially, and she gives you six months or 12 months to come, you might buy her a motorbike instead of that flower you're going to spend some money on. I want to repeat, if you humble yourself and if that woman truly cares about you and your future, you might not buy her a flower during this Valentine that is coming. But in the next 12 months, if you are disciplined enough, you could be in a position to buy her a motorbike. But you know the problem that we have? We've got nothing called financial discipline. We want to bet, we want to gamble, we want to, you know, make quick money, 
We want to open a Facebook account today, a page today, and tomorrow we want to earn from it. We want to talk to some people, oh, give me a hundred, you know, give me 10,000 Kenya shillings. In one week, I'll give you 23,000. Uliskia wapi hiyo? Hiyo uliskia wapi? Financial freedom comes from discipline. When you discipline yourself, with that small amount of money you're finding, that small amount of money you're wasting on people, you're wasting on stuff that you don't need. If you get so much discipline, God is going to open ways for you. You'll start to earn money from different sources. It doesn't just come like a manna, it takes time. So humble yourself, be disciplined enough to understand that it's not yet the right time for me. To do this tell her to wait can she wait if she can't wait let her go listen guys a woman or a man who can be patient with you should go a family friend or brother or sister who can be patient with you should go we are broke because we've got no discipline People who cannot be patient with you are not good for you. You just, imagine you just came from hustling, from college maybe, or you've been looking for a job. You guys have been having food, just basic food. You've never been sleeping hungry. You've got food. And God blesses you with a job. And just the first payment, the first month of your payment, your family is telling you, oh, there is school fees, oh, there is this, oh, there is that, oh, food, oh, maize, we need. Are you okay? And then you are giving in because, you know, I am the only one they are looking. What if you did not get that job? Who will they be looking at? What if you did not get that job? I'm telling people this. When you are broke and you find a breakthrough, get lost just get lost for some few months and when you are lost don't be like the prodigal son don't get lost and get lost with men <laughs> outside there don't get lost and get lost with women outside there get lost and be disciplined with your money save for the next six months without helping anyone Save for the next six months. Let people live the life they've been living before you got that job. In the first six months, just save the money that you can save. After six months, and you put aside that money and you lock it somewhere, you now start working. And now you tell them that, hey, buddies, I just got a job. After six months, tell them, I just got a job. Now, we can upgrade our food. We can start to upgrade our house. We can start to upgrade something. You've locked your savings for six months. You have done something called beating the poverty of generation. A generational poverty by locking your money in account. And once you lock that money there, you are now studying on how you can invest it. But that's a story for another day. May God keep you so that you might get time again to listen to me to help you understand how to lock it and invest it to beat poverty from your generation poverty is a very bad thing poor people are really suffering you guys understand most of you understand you've been there before there's no door you can knock and open for you Everywhere you go, things are just difficult. Have you ever guys understood that when you don't have money in your pocket, you feel very hungry? When you don't have money in your pocket, you are always hungry. You just need food and you cannot even see that food. And every food you see is expensive. But when you have money in your pocket, you will never even feel thirsty. 
I don't know if that happens only to me, but you guys can 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 let me understand. When you have money in your pocket, you don't even feel thirsty. But when you don't have it, my friend, everywhere you walk, the only thing you are smelling is food, and you are very hungry, and you can't have even afford it. Poverty is the worst thing that you can have in your life. And the only way to beat poverty, if you're coming from a very humble family that was stricken by poverty, when you get a breakthrough, get lost for some time, six months minimum, get lost. Once you get lost, I can swear you will never be poor again. And including your family, they will never suffer again. But if you think that just because you got that job, now the whole budget and everything, all problems that your family have been having, now you are thinking that you want to clear those problems. You will stay broke and you will stay in poverty, yet you are getting paid. You will work in every month, you get paid, and you don't even see where your money is going. 